Hello everyone, welcome to my online masterclass. I'm so excited that you're here. I'd love for you to set your name in the chat box and introduce yourself. Let me know your name and your location. I'll be answering all of your questions throughout this masterclass. So let's dive in. How to make money from your art practice online. The masterclass. Hello, I'm Martha May Ronson and I help artists like you with online marketing and the business side of being an artist. Before we begin, here's what I need from you today. Give me your full attention. We live in a very distracting world. If this masterclass could potentially open your mind, which could lead to a fruitful career as a professional artist, then I'm going to need you to commit fully. By committing fully, you're cultivating commitment and you're demonstrating that you take your art practice seriously. So limit distractions. If you are getting notifications on your phone or whatever, resist from checking while we spend this short time together. We are not going to be with each other very long, so I'd love for you to be fully present. I recommend that you grab a pen and a notebook to take notes because when you write things down, the information absorbs into your mind as you write and read them back. And then finally, implementation. So be an active learner, meaning take action. I'm going to give you all of this information today, but if you don't do anything with it, you are simply wasting your time. You are here because you want to start making from your money from your art practice, or increase your visibility as a visual artist. So when the masterclass is over, take what you've learned today and start implementing what you didn't know before. Please use the chat box. I'll be here answering your questions throughout the masterclass. And if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to reach out to me on social media and use the hashtag S-Y-A-O. And if anyone's dyslexic here, can you just tell me in the chat? If that's you, put a number three in the chat box. So for those that are dyslexic, I'm dyslexic too, so I've created visuals and diagrams that I find easy to understand. So hopefully you will too. I'm going to run through the agenda so that you know what to expect from the webinar. I will walk you through the five key principles to making money from your art practice online. First, you will learn how to increase your sales potential without compromising your work. And you will learn the ultimate secret that is stopping you from monetizing your art practice. I'll then be sharing with you how you can accelerate these five key principles followed by questions at the end. So for any questions that you might have, because I want you to go away from this masterclass knowing more than when you came in. But first I wanna start off by sharing my art world journey with you of how I learnt what I know and how I got to where I am today. So let me start at the very beginning of my art world career. So like most of you, I went to art school and I studied fine art. I started my degree in painting at Wimbledon College of Art in London and then transferred over to Central St. Martins or CSM as it's now called. So I completed my fine art degree there. I loved being in art school, but living in London as an art student is financially very difficult. In my second year, it was such a struggle for me to buy art materials that my tutor at the time got me a job with one of her past students at Camden Art Centre. I was ambitious and began volunteering, invigilating the exhibitions upstairs. And that's when I wasn't in the cafe serving coffees downstairs. Someone I worked with in the cafe told me that he just landed a paid invigilating job at a big gallery that I'd never heard before 
and he offered to get me a job there too. So I was so desperate for money at the time that I gladly accepted. So I soon started working at the Hauser and Worth on Piccadilly and on Savile Row in London. I absolutely loved it. This is an exhibition from one of Phila de Barlow's exhibitions there. And this is where my love for contemporary art grew and grew. In my final year, as one of the very few painters on the fine art course at CSM, I was fortunate enough to have a tutorial with, with a visiting professor from Ohio State University. And she suggested that I apply for the MFA program out there. I was accepted onto a three-year program and was offered a full ride scholarship to study and live in America. So six weeks later, I was living in the US. But during my time in Ohio, I really missed the galleries in London. So I started taking 10 hour overnight bus trips to New York City by myself. I was in my early 20s, I didn't know anyone in New York City, but my passion for contemporary art and drive took me there. And then one day on one of my trips, I wandered into New York's Hauser and Worth's gallery in the Upper East Side. Now, this is the gallery where the owners, Ivan and Manuela Worth, actually live, so they live upstairs with the gallery. And I got chatting to the girl on the front desk and I just told her how much I loved the gallery and how I loved spending time there when I was an invigilator in London. But now I lived in the Midwest in Ohio. She asked me if I was interested in a job. Of course I said yes and that I'd love to. So a few weeks later, I hopped back on the overnight bus with my two suitcases and moved to New York City. Now, after my internship was over, I realised that I didn't want to go back to Ohio. So I returned to the UK and moved back to London. But I felt like I was back at square one. So when I moved back to London, I felt completely disconnected from the art world. I felt like there was no way in. So all of my friends had moved away. I couldn't get a job. And to be honest, it was an extremely difficult time for me. I longed to be back in the contemporary art world. I had no credibility, no one knew me. I was young with no art world connections. So that's when I decided to bring the contemporary art world to me. And that's when I started using Twitter. So I started tweeting about the amazing shows and exhibition openings that I was going to. I'd tag in artists and galleries and I'd get recognised online and at, at gallery openings. And without me even realising what I was doing at the time, but I was actually building a reputation for myself and I was building a brand for myself. Now, after my Twitter really started to take off, opportunities just started to come my way. I landed a job working at one of the leading fine art prints and editions gallery in London. It was here that I was fortunate to work on exhibitions with so many great artists, including Richard Long, Cornelia Parker, Anthony Gormley. I learned how the gallery business works firsthand from a dealer who had been in the game for a long time. And he had worked with artists such as David Hockney and Richard Hamilton and Howard Hodgkin from the very beginning. I became an art fair consultant because I just loved the buzz of an art fair and began working with several different galleries on their stands all over the world learning to sell to top collectors on the job and making industry connections. I became a gallery manager in a gallery in central London that focused on emerging contemporary painting 
And it was really here that I learned how to run a contemporary art gallery blindfolded and got to deal with some of the top art collectors in the world. And then I became a gallery director of a small contemporary art gallery in London while I was curating exhibitions and building my artist coaching business on the side. But my favourite part of working in a gallery was always connecting with artists, visiting artist studios and working on exhibitions with artists while solving so many problems along the way. So where I am today, I am now dedicated to helping artists reach their full potential and I'm fortunate to be helping artists with their businesses on a daily basis. Having had 10 years experience in the commercial contemporary art world, I've built a reputation and my own brand in becoming a leader in my field. I've built a collective community of over 30,000 followers across all of my social platforms with followers from leaders in the industry. So let me tell you why this masterclass came to be. It really came about in response to questions I received via Twitter on selling and turning one's art practice into a business. The commercial side of the art world can feel like an exclusive place and for artists especially. You can feel kept in the dark when it comes to the dealing side of things. I have felt it too. But I didn't come from a privileged background. I struggled with money in the beginning. I didn't have connections. I built my following and my reputation from scratch. <laughs> so I'm here to dis demystify the contemporary art world and open the doors to those that feel that they don't have access. So I'm going to share with you my insights with you about the business side of being an artist and share with you what I found to be the most important areas that you need to be focusing on if you want to reach a high level of success and make money from your art practice. So that's enough about me. Let's talk about you now. You are an artist and you may or may not have a gallery. You are either selling or you're not selling your work yet, or you're selling, but you are looking to increase your sales potential and level up in your career as an artist. And you are here because you recognize that as an artist, you must operate as if you were a business. If you want to make money from your art practice online, then you've got to operate as if you're a business and leveraging the internet to do that in our current climate is a really smart thing to do. You know that you need to make sales and you need to know how to market yourself, how to promote yourself, how to speak to the right people, how to get organized and effectively function as if you were a business while maintaining a high standard of the work that you're producing in your studio. So you've really got to wear all the hats. Now it may seem overwhelming, but don't fret. I'm here to walk you through the five key principles of what it takes to make money from your art practice online. And what I'm talking about here is cultivating a demand for you and your work over the long term. So there's no short term fixes here. Let's get into it then. The first key principle is branding. What is branding and what ha has it got to do with me? Well, associating yourself with a brand or branding as an artist can be a little bit cringe. It may make you feel that you aren't being authentic, that you're selling out, and that it's just too commercial. But what do people really mean by too commercial? You are here because you want to learn how to make money from your art practice, right? When you hear the term brand, 
you may think of a company logo or something like that, but it really goes beyond that. Brand simply means a defined identity. It's not just the image, but it is your voice. It's how you communicate. It's how you present yourself and how you approach what you do. So I'm going to show you a screenshot from a Google image search that I did earlier. Can anyone tell me who this artist is? So just type in the chat and let me know if you know who this is. So this artist is obviously Lucian Freud. We see a range of images here of artworks all looking very similar. They're all of a similar style, the way that they're painted, the colour palette that's used, the composition, the subject matter, even the mood is similar. But how do we know that this artist is Lucian Freud? How do we know that this isn't just another artist who happens to paint in this style? Well, we have all seen enough works by the artist Lucian Freud to know that this page of images are of works by Lucian Freud. And this is exactly what branding is. It's having a consistent style or message and having people see it enough times to recognize you through that repetition. Here is a brief explanation of what branding is then. Branding is an overarching term to describe a defined identity of a business or entity, which includes imagery, design, voice, approach, and communication style. And what makes a good brand identity? Well, a good brand identity goes beyond the brand name. So for example, it could be shown as an image or part of an image or an idea that is instantly recognizable and familiar. So a classic example here in this image, you can see a hand grasping a canned drink and with the color and the positioning of the subject matter alone, we all know instantly that this is an image um, that is advertising Coca-Cola, right? So brand goes beyond the logo and the name. Let's take a look at another artist. An artist with a strong brand is one where you don't have to have the whole artwork to know who the artwork is by. Can anyone tell me in this chat who this part of an artwork is by? Just type in the chat. Yes, so we can see through this iconic heart motif, it's one of Banksy's artworks. Banksy has a clear defined brand and he's consistent with all of his content that he shares online, which is why he's so popular, which is why he's so desirable and which is why his artwork is high in value and highly sought after. And this is an image from a stunt that he pulled a couple of years ago of Girl with Balloon at a Sotheby's auction, where the art world sat in front of this work and watched the work self-destruct in the auction room in front of hundreds of bidders. And then if we hop over to his website, we land on this page with this image of a man with a balaclava over his head. And then looking at his Instagram page, his profile, we see images of his signature styled black penciled artworks and his rebellious nature bleeds through his copy. So in his captions and you can see in his bio, he states not on Facebook, not on Twitter, so he's almost anarchistic. I've broken down Banksy's brand by listing a few words that one might associate with him and his nature through this spider diagram. He's elusive, he's mysterious, he creates political art, he uses black and white stencils in his work and rebellious as well. 
So why is it important for you to have a brand? Well, because if you have a strong brand, over time, people will come to recognize you and your work. They will know what to expect from your art. And this is going to help in building a reputation or a reputable brand. You are cultivating trust from your audience who will then become your buyers. And they will continue to support you and buy from you over time. It allows you to present yourself as a professional so that people will take you seriously. And on some some subconscious level, you will become familiar in the back of people's minds. So you'll leave a lasting impression with them. How can you brand yourself? Okay, so first of all, it's essential to know yourself, know your work, know what you stand for and know your values. Stand out from the crowd by being unique. Think about what makes you different from all the other artists out there. What is your USP or your unique selling proposition? Do you have a story? Maybe you had a unique background or you went through a particular hardship. And maybe you weren't trained professionally or you began your art practice only later on in life. Years ago, when I went to a Wade Guyton retrospective at the Whitney in New York, New York, I love how he tells this story where years prior to his solo show at the Whitney, he used to work there as a security guard. So he came from humble beginnings. For someone to be an invigilator at an incredibly accredited museum and then to go on to have a solo retrospective there years later, it's an incredibly inspiring story. So think about what your story might be. And then know your audience. So be relatable and respond to them accordingly. After you've considered these points, take some time to reflect where you are right now and define yourself. Make a decision and think of a few words to associate with yourself and with your art practice. Use the spider diagram like I did with Banksy. It may be that you're an abstract painter or a figurative painter. It may be that you're a ceramicist a mixed media artist, a conceptual artist. Think about your voice and your communication style. Are you loud? Are you political? Are you quiet and humble? Are you young and exuberant? Or have you had a previous career in another field? What is your story? Now you might have a bit of resistance when doing this exercise, but I promise you, this is really going to help you define who you are as an artist. And then be consistent. Once you've established your brand, have this in your mind as you put out your work and yourself on social media and beyond. Okay, so the second key principle is presence. You may have already heard the expressions having an online presence or being present in the art world. What is presence and what does it really mean? So having a presence simply means both you and your artwork taking up space. So this includes being active in the art world, people knowing who you are, people recognizing your work, and having exposure online and offline. The reality is, you could be the greatest, most prolific artist in the world, but if no one knows you exist, you are not going to have a successful career as an artist. So create a presence, grow your presence, which then increases your exposure, which then leads to more opportunities. 
And the more people that know about you and the work that you are making, the higher the likelihood that opportunities will come your way. So why not increase your chances? There are countless channels where you can be present as an artist today. We are living in a really exciting time right now where promoting and selling your artwork goes beyond physical gallery locations. Yes, it's still great to take part in these shows, but think beyond there. You have the entire globe at the end of your fingertips with social media and the internet. Providing you know how to use social media effectively, your outreach is really limitless. And what's great about social media is that the platforms are free to use. So use these channels to promote you and your work. Have accounts on all social media platforms. I can tell you this from experience that most gallerists discover new artists on Instagram now. So this one is essential. Have a website where curators, gallerists and collectors can easily view your portfolio and your recent works and read your story. Take part in in opportunities that come your way such as collaborations and partnerships, team up with other artists to promote each other's work online, start a mailing list and keep those who are interested in your work up to date by sending regular emails. Being present in the art world goes hand in hand with being accessible, meaning you should aim to lower the barrier to access you and your artwork. By making it easier for people to discover you and contact you, this leads to more sales and more opportunities. So have an email address on your website and invite people to contact you and find out more about you and what you have to offer. The third key principle is networking. What is networking? (laughs) So networking is simply identifying networks and creating relationships through communication and nurturing and maintaining relationships. To be clear, networking is not attending as many private views as possible. It's not actively selling your work. It's not a display of arrogance. It's not schmoozing and collecting as many business cards as humanly possible. It's not manipulating people or having superficial relationships. It's not sending DMs on social media because you want something from someone. And it's not pretending to be someone that you're not, okay? And why is networking important? Well... One of the most important activities you need to be doing as an artist is networking because it'll fast track growing your brand and your presence this way. You may have heard the expression, it's not what you know, but who you know. The reality is to be successful, you need to be good at networking and connect with the right people because it's not just about your work. It's about you as an individual. When a gallerist chooses to work with you or an art collector makes the decision to buy your work, not only are they investing in your artwork, but they are investing in you. Through networking, you are forming reciprocal relationships with people that you admire, respect and trust. It's an important skill to have because If you offer to help others, they will help you back. And longevity carries weight. If you're in the game for the long term, I promise you will reap the rewards in the future. So the sooner you start building connections, the better. I've identified different pockets of networks that exist in the art world and in your world by breaking down different groups of people. So you're in the middle here and you're connected 
to multiple networks. Aim to actively work on forming and building relationships with people in these groups to strengthen your career as an artist. Get to know where these pockets exist on Instagram and on other social platforms and tap into them. How do you actually go about networking then? Here are a few things that you can do to get you going. Reach out to other artists that you like to collaborate with. Introduce yourself to art world professionals. Follow and form connections with normal people on social media and say hello. Contact artists further along in their career for advice and mentorship. Interact with press by sharing interesting projects that you're working on. And DM people on Instagram who show a genuine interest in your work. And then maintaining relationships is just, if not more, important. And you can do this by sending regular emails to your mailing list to keep them informed on your current activities. And supporting your contemporaries online by sharing and promoting their activities, interacting with others on social media, so retweeting, shares, commenting on other people's posts, offering compliments to art critics that you admire, if you genuinely enjoyed a recent piece of writing by them, and staying in regular contact with gallerists or potential buyers who have shown an interest in your work in the past. Because just because they're not interested in your work right now doesn't mean to say that they're not interested in working with you in the future. So never burn bridges, keep the doors always open. And be your own affiliate. So as if you're your own walking promotion. Because you are the best person to promote your artwork. Networking is not a one-time activity. It is something you should be doing on a regular basis. Networking increases your sales potential and can lead to direct sales from those in your network, or it may lead to referrals. So it's super, super important. And if you're still sat here feeling pretty uncomfortable at the thought of networking, let me say that if a Banksy painting sold for £9.9 million and no one has met him in person, then you can make this work. And with the internet, there really are no excuses. The fourth key principle is creating a market for your work. So what does creating a market really mean? So Creating a market simply means getting your work into the hands of others. And creating a demand for your work. And what is required to do this? Well, you must have a strong direction in your work. This means you already have a strong sense of self. You have a solid art practice, which has been developed over time and you now have a strong body of work that is consistent and you are confident in what you have to offer. While simultaneously, you must be building a brand for yourself. And simultaneously, you are having a presence in the art world and on social media and you're being active and you're networking. People are getting to know you. They have seen your work in shows. You have associations with reputable affiliations. You have the social proof through social media platforms and editorial features. So it's a really, it's really a mixing pot of the three other key principles we've gone through so far. Now let's talk about how to create a market. So you can create a market for yourself through marketing and self-promotion. You can create a market through selling, So if you sell an artwork, you're in the game, you've started a market for your work already. Through creating a demand, so this is required to sustain sales and with the help of others as well in the form of partnerships, affiliations, collaborations and press. 
So how do you get your work out there and create a demand for it? I'm going to share with you a case study of an artist who has successfully created a market for himself. Tom Wilmot created a market for himself by giving his paintings away for free. Let me break it down for you. In 2015, Tom was working a full-time job and had his art practice on the side. He had a very small mailing list of about 30 people at the time, and every week he would email the group on BCC and offer a new painting to the group for free. The first person to write back and tell him that they liked the painting would get the painting. He would consistently email us at the same time every week. So we were all waiting at the ready to get first dibs on a new painting that he had made. And why was this effective? Well, by doing this, Tom created a market for himself. He used his pre-existing contacts and turned them into collectors. Tom now has over six and a half thousand followers on Instagram. He's gained gallery representation from two galleries. He gets invited to participate in exhibitions regularly. He is now selling his works frequently and he's been interviewed on podcasts and online publications as well. The value of those free artworks acquired by those people who became collectors of his work early on has now increased because the value of him and his work have increased. He made his work accessible and created a market and built upon that. And you can do the same. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is the right method for you. Maybe you are in a different stage of your career right now. Maybe you are already monetizing your art practice and you are looking to take it to the next level. My point here is that in order to increase your sales potential, there must be a demand for your work. People must want to acquire it, whether it's free or not free. The fifth and most important principle to making money from your art practice online is mindset. So why is mindset, what is mindset and why is it so important? Well, mindset is how you approach situations based on your pre-existing beliefs about yourself and the world around you. Having the right mindset is the most important attribute to the five key principles because without this, your sales potential is massively limited. So let me tell you right now what it means to have the right mindset. You've got to have self-belief, believing in yourself and in your art practice. Because if you don't believe in your work, why should anyone else? Resilience. Not giving up despite the knocks, criticism and setbacks. As an artist, you will face rejection in your career. But please know that this is normal. Please don't give up and know that everyone goes through these tough times, money struggles, confidence issues, It takes dedication and perseverance to reach a high level of success. So keep going. (laughs) And having a growth mindset. Having a growth mindset is recognizing that many of your limitations are simply lack of skills. But you know that skills can be learned. Just because you don't know something already doesn't mean to say you can't pick up a book and learn how to do something. And positivity, so learning to see the good in every situation and recognizing the lessons that come with bad situations. Here I've listed two sets of thoughts and beliefs that you might have. So an artist with a fixed mindset might be thinking, I will always be a poor struggling artist. I'm bad at networking. They don't teach you professional skills in art school. I don't know how to sell my work. I shouldn't have to promote my own work. 
An artist with a growth mindset is thinking, networking is a skill that can be learnt and developed over time. I didn't get taught professional skills in art school, but I can teach myself. I can learn how to sell. Promoting my work increases my sales potential, so it makes sense for me to do it. What we want to do here is cultivate a growth mindset for success. There's no such thing as can't. I've listed a few other limiting beliefs I have encountered in my career working with artists. And by limiting belief, I mean a negative thought that you might have about yourself that is going to slow down or hinder your progress. The most common ones are, I'm dyslexic, I don't have enough money, I don't know how to sell, I live too far away from the city, I'm not good at networking, I don't know how to use social media, no one is buying art at the moment because of the current state of the economy, and age seems to crop up fairly often. So either I'm too young and I'm not experienced enough, or I'm too old and I've missed the boat. The artist Phila de Barlos, she was 74 when she was chosen as Britain's representative at the Venice Biennale in 2017. So never think that you're not at the right age to achieve something great. This is how you can start to shift your mindset. So you are going to identify the negative patterns and limiting beliefs that are holding you back and then go to work on them. So I'd like you to do this exercise. Take some time out of the studio for some self-reflection. Pull out a notebook and a pen and I'd like you to draw a line down the middle of the page in, one of, in your notebook. On the left side, write down a few sentences of things that are holding you back. Beliefs that you recognize to be limiting. And on the right side, flip each belief around to reflect a growth mindset. So here's what it might look like. I'm bad at networking becomes networking is a skill that can be learnt and developed over time. They don't teach you professional skills in art school becomes I didn't get taught professional skills in art school, but I can teach myself. I don't know how to sell becomes I can learn how to sell. And I shouldn't have to promote my artwork becomes promoting my artwork increases my sales potential so it makes sense for me to do so. I can tell you that mindset is the most important principle you must master in order to make money from your art practice and reach a high level of success as an artist. So these are the five key principles that we've covered in the masterclass that are really going to set the foundations for your business as an artist online. And now I'm going to need you to implement. Take what you've learned from this masterclass and turn it into action. You can go to all the top art schools in the world, read all the free info out there on the internet on being an artist, but without taking action, you're going to remain stuck and stay in the same place where you are now. If you would like to accelerate your career as an artist online, I'm opening up enrollment to my program, Sell Your Art Online. I'll be teaching you how to establish a presence online, how to cultivate a loyal audience online, and I'll be teaching you how to sell to direct buyers in your audience. In the program, you will learn how to create and establish a brand for yourself as an artist and around your art practice without sacrificing your authenticity or compromising your art in any way. You will learn how to identify your USP, develop a brand voice and apply your brand consistently 
across all of your online platforms. You will learn the importance of social media as an artist at this current time and how it will benefit you as a business. You will learn how to set up all the most important social media platforms and how to optimize your profiles. You'll learn how to run them and use them effectively. And I will show you a step-by-step guide to grow your Instagram following, to increase your sales potential and increase your opportunities. You will learn how to maximize collecting email addresses to build your email list. And these people are people who are truly interested in you and your work. So I'll explain what an email list really is and how it will benefit your business in the long term. And most importantly, I'll show you how to start and grow one. You will learn how to position yourself online and market yourself through high quality content creation across your multiple streams. Through your website and social media platforms, you will learn how to put yourself in front of the right audience and learn how to advance your marketing efforts through storytelling and copywriting. And you will learn the fundamentals of selling your artwork online without compromising the quality and the standard of your work. You will learn the key principles of selling, how to handle objections, and most importantly, how to close a sale. So here is a recap of the five core modules of my Sell Your Art Online program, as well as the five core modules that cover the digital marketing section, you'll get access to selling and marketing strategies. So once you've put the foundations and the key learnings in place, you'll start selling. And you'll get six months access to the course content and materials on my teaching platform. You'll get downloadable templates and worksheets. You'll get access to the closed Facebook group for course members only. So you'll share your progress and you'll learn from others within a community of like-minded, ambitious artists. You'll get group Q&A coaching calls with me for any questions that you might have in your unique situation. And all the calls are recorded so you can access them at a later date. So if you're wondering if this program is right for you or not, I'll tell you that you are ready for this course if you are an ambitious and driven towards becoming a successful artist. You already have a strong body of work, you want to create a sustainable and profitable business around your art practice. You are not deterred by learning and developing new skills. And you embrace the digital age that we live in. So you're willing to leverage the internet to make meaningful connections online. And this program is not for you if you only make art as a hobby and you don't intend to make money from your art practice. You don't have a strong body of work yet that is ready to show. You aren't ambitious or driven towards success and you have a negative or doomed attitude. So positive can do attitudes only, please. (laughs) So as a fast action bonus, if you enroll on the course within the next hour, you will get a one-on-one coaching session with me completely free. So I'll be able to go through your social platforms and your website with a fine tooth comb and give you personalized feedback on your online presence. So you can enroll now by using the button below on the screen. Let's talk about what the investment is. So your art education probably costs you somewhere between 12,000 and 45,000 pounds. And working with me in a one-on-one capacity would cost up to £2,000. Now, with everything that's included in this course bundle, the regular price for my Sell Your Art Online program is £995. But if you enrol for a limited time only, you can enrol on the program for £495. So you save £500 which is really good. So the regular price will come into place in a couple of days. And if you pay in full as an extra bonus, 
you get access to my Instagram for Artist Workshop, which has helped so many artists to optimize their Instagram accounts. So you'll have those group Q&A coaching calls with me where you get to ask me questions in a group call setting um, and you'll get to meet other ambitious artists on the program too. And you'll have the access to the closed Facebook community for course members only. So you will learn and grow with other artists and you can support each other over the journey over the next six months. So to recap, on the Sell Your Art Online program, you'll learn how to create a brand around yourself as an artist and position yourself in front of those you want to be seen by. You will learn how to effectively start and grow your email list. You'll learn how to create quality content around your art practice and establish your presence on multiple social media platforms. And you'll also learn the invaluable skills of selling your art to direct buyers without compromising your work or your integrity. So for all of the course content and the six months of support and coaching calls, the early bird price is available at £495. All you need to do is select the pay in full option, which gives you the Instagram for Artists workshop as a bonus or select the payment plan option. And this allows you to join the program for as little as £79. If it's easy for you, for you, you can spread the payments out over the seven months. So if you select the pay in full option, you will land on a page that looks like this. So you simply enter your name and your email address and your card details and then press place order. If you select the payment plan option, you will land on a page that looks like this. So again, simply enter your name, your email address and your card details and then press place order. And the first payment will come out immediately and the following payments will come out on the same date of the following six months. And there will be no additional fees or charges or anything like that with the payment plan option. Now, once you've placed your order, you'll be redirected to this page. So, which says, yay, welcome to my program, sell your art online. And this confirms that you're enrolled on the program. Now, once you're in, you'll receive an email from me with all the information and details that you'll need. You'll receive a unique login to my course platform, Teachable. You'll receive access to the course content and the materials, your invitation to the private course group on Facebook, and instructions on when the first group coaching call is. You'll receive all of this information before the program begins in June. Once you've enrolled and the course goes live, you'll have access to my course platform, which looks like this, which I am super excited to show you. You'll have welcome info on how to navigate through the course content and where to start first. And then you'll start working your way through your online presence to get you going before you head over to the selling portion and the selling strategies. Laura went through the program and nailed her branding and absolutely transformed her website and got rid of all of the unnecessary parts that were really detracting away from the most important thing on there, which was, which is her artwork. And Maddie enrolled on the program and got clear on her brand and really upped her game on Instagram and completely changed the way that she was posting on Instagram from how she was posting before she joined the program. Now, if you have any questions, I'll be here to answer all of them. So please let me know use the chat box and ask away. One of the most common questions I get asked is, I have a full-time job, can I still join the program? So because the course content is all online, you can go through the course materials in your own time. Now, lots of artists I work with haven't made the transition to being a full-time artist yet. So some of them come in with full-time jobs, some have part-time jobs. Paul is an amazing example. So Paul's an amazing painter 
and joined the program and was able to work through the content around his job. And because all of the group calls are recorded, if you cannot attend one of the calls, you can just simply submit your questions and it will be answered on the call and you can simply watch the replay. Another question that I get asked is, do I need a pre-existing following? So nope, you don't. There are lots of tech tutorials on how to use each social media platform. So although it helps to have an existing following in the course, I teach you how to start from scratch and build from there. Pam joined the program and gained so much confidence showing up online and building her social media followings from a very small number. And she really kind of was able to grow her following and focused on making meaningful connections online. So this brings us to the end of the masterclass. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope you enjoyed the masterclass. I'd love, love, love to have you in the program. If you have any questions at all, I'll be here in the chat to answer them. And a reminder that if you enroll in the program and pay in full, you get my Instagram for Artists workshop as a bonus. And if you join now, so within the next hour, you get a one hour one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me as an additional bonus. So thanks again, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you in the program.